Greetings library patrons, my name is Jeff. I'm with the York County Library, your community link, here in York County, South Carolina. And in this video, we're going to continue looking at Novelist Plus and how to find some books for you. To get started, you'll want to open up the Novelist Plus homepage and sign in with your library card. If you don't know how to do that, I'm going to refer you back to the first video that we did for Novelist Plus. Once on the home page and signed in, the first thing that you may notice here is I'm in the mood for books that are, and you have a uh, some tabs with different pairs of descriptor terms on them. And if you click up here, you can change those uh, for different ages, and you'll notice when you click on them, the terms change as well, not only the titles, but the terms as well. Um, so you can do anything at Novelist Plus for any age group, any way of finding books. You can do it for any age group. Um, we're going to look at the adult um, books, and uh, you may have noticed that any book you any book you hover over it pops up a little uh, quick little description of it. To get more, you can actually click on the the cover and bring up the books page. If these pairs of terms, you don't find them particularly uh, attractive or is not something you're interested in, you can click on Try Our Appeal Mixer and you can create your own appeal mix. Again, you can see you can do this for any age group and you just choose a category. We're going to choose Character and we're going to go over here and we're going to go with Complex. By the way, the numbers out to the right, that's how many titles have been tagged specifically with these appeals, appeal terms. So complex characters have been tagged in 3,640 titles. Uh, the second category, we're going to go with storyline and we're going to click on, let's go down to unconventional. And if we click on find titles with those two, Unconventional stories with complex characters. You see we get a total of 113. And you can scroll through these titles with these arrows. Uh, and again, you can just get a quick description if you hover over the title. Now, we've gotten 113 with this combination. I will say that the reason why they choose uh, pairs of descriptors is when you select a third category, it tends to narrow down uh, your list quite a bit. And sometimes you're unable to find any books with those three that you've chosen, the three appeal mix uh, terms that you have chosen. Let's, uh, let's go with tone and let's go with uh, amusing. We click on find titles you can see it narrows it all the way down to one so there's only one title with this particular combination if we were to spread this out and again we just want to uh, find a, a tone with more um, more tags like atmospheric you can see that's 14,000 um, if we click on that and find titles that's going to give us 17. Um, so it's more than four, but it's quite a bit uh, fewer than 113 titles. So when you are using this tool, and it's an excellent tool, you'll just need to be aware that um, pairs of descriptor terms tend to give you a pretty good list, but when you add a third, um, you're going to have to sort of just experiment to see um, what you know, what kind of list you get and uh, what works best for you. So we're going to go back to the home page, click, go up to the upper left and click on home. And we're going to look at a couple of other ways to find books over on the left hand side. You can see recommended reads lists. Um, you can click on any of these um, lists and each one mysteries, for example, brings up a sub menu of um, even narrower uh, terms, narrower, smaller lists of specific kinds of mysteries. 
If we wanted to click on Christian Mysteries, that would bring up a list of books uh, that are considered or tagged as Christian Mysteries. And you can just, again, you can go through and look at all of the titles, hover over them and get an idea. Over on the right, you see there are additional lists listed there. And you can sort these, you can see, by any metric that you that is available here. Um, if we s select popularity, it will sort these by the most popular of this list. And uh, you may notice that there's a little folder icon down here with a plus sign on it. When I click on that plus sign, you notice that folder changes, and up at the top, up in the upper right hand corner this icon has changed as well so while I am logged in I can add these titles to a folder and that way um, if I am going through and picking out certain books that I want to uh, print out a list of or email a list of I can add them all to my folder and then uh, click on email and email the list or click on print or click on save and I will be able to save a list of these um, particular books. Now, one of the things that you may have noticed also up here in the upper right is a sign-in link. And you may be thinking, I thought we were signed in. We signed in with our library card. That's true. Uh, one of the neat things about um, this particular site is you can start an account with the host site, which is EBSCO. And if you do that, these folders that you create, you can create as many folders as you want, and you can save them from session to session. So for example, if I were to um, exit and then come back tomorrow, my folder again would be empty because I haven't signed in. Now if I wanted to sign in, I would click here and it would, uh, it would open up the EBSCO sign-in page, um, as you can see. And I could sign in with my username and password. If I had, have not created an account, I can click on create one now. And you can see that I can sign up with Google or I can give all of this information here. Um, now down at the bottom, you, need, you have to click on yes. I consent to the collection of this personalized data. Um, a lot of people are nervous about um, having your data collected. I can assure you I've had an account with EBSCO for years. Um, I've never gotten any uh, spam or inappropriate email or uh, never had my uh, identity stolen or anything like that. So um, it's perfectly safe. The only reason they um, collect your information is they watch your searches and uh, what you're looking for at Novelist Plus in order to give you better results. That's the only reason they collect that data. And uh, they can't give you better results. They can't give you personalized service without collecting that data. And it's a choice. You're certainly, you can click on this little link here and it explains all of that. Um, and if you're uncomfortable with having your data collected, that's fine. You can always use Novelist Plus without uh, without an EBSCO account and you can sign in with your library card and use Novelist Plus. You just cannot save um, lists or anything. You can't save your folder contents from session to session. That may not be a deal breaker for you. So uh, I do think, however, it's, it's a handy um, item to have. And again, I also think that having better search results uh, and better, um, more personalized service is worth uh, worth uh, getting a free EBSCO account. So you can see right here, it says to store these items in the folder for a future session, sign in. So I would recommend going ahead and uh, opening a free account. Again, there's nothing to be nervous about. I understand if you don't want to do that. Um, plenty of folks don't. And there are other ways of finding uh, material on the site. You can browse genres uh, for different age groups. You can look at all of the keeping up pages for each of these subjects. Those often contain articles about 
new books and, and things uh, uh, coming out for this particular subject. Um, you can look at award winners, uh, all sorts of ways of getting lists of books um, that you're looking for. Up at the top, there are also other lists that you can, uh, menus that you can browse by appeal, genre, themes, again, awards. Um, some of these are uh, specifically designed for librarians. Um, you're probably not making a book display in your home, but maybe you are, and why not? You know, so um, but that's typically for librarians. Uh, Curricular Connections is a neat uh, is a neat page for teachers, so that you can find books that um, that you know connect to whatever particular theme you're looking for. And when you bring up lists, you may notice again over to the right you can save those into your folder. And over on the left, you can refine, you can always refine your results uh, in various ways by adding more limiters. Um, you can see how that works. It's just a tremendous resource. Um, but again, it's a little, uh, it's, there's so much here, it can be confusing for a lot of folks. I would encourage you to use Novelist Plus, experiment with it. Again, just like any other tool, the more you use it, the more you get used to it, the more comfortable you become, uh, and you will absolutely come to see it as indispensable at some point. And that's going to do it for our um, for our tour of Novelist Plus. Our next video is going to be on Mango, the language uh, learning app. In the meantime, keep using our virtual library resources and stay safe, and we will see you next time.